talking about data lake. What is data lake? So let's look at why we need the data lake and how data lake come, came into being. Um, data warehouse, uh, as useful as it is, is very expensive. You need to collect all the data from all sources, uh, every place in your enterprise. Store it for seven to ten years, and uh, these are like the lowest, lowest detail, the level of uh, data, right? So the amount is huge, and on top of that, uh, of that you need to break the barriers between source systems, reorganize them, reload them, uh, and then you need to extra aggregate and apply filter when necessary. So database, data warehouse is uh, very expensive, not only in the implement, uh, implementation and operation, but also in just creating that, um, uh, doing the conceptual design for it. But on the other hand, as we already see, ODS, in the sense of uh, ODS, ODS are already uh, well-formatted uh, relational data. Modern data sources are generating well-formatted raw data files, right? either re relational or JSON with a reasonable, lay stable uh, schema. It's so well-formatted that we can treat them as relational data and analyze them using SQL queries. Um, a lot of uh, applications are able to directly write the use uh, 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 to build their transaction system on top of a relational database. If not, they can also uh, at least generating relational formatted uh, C, uh, files. So that's when we the, the idea of uh, running against those files instead of relational database comes up. Why not keep the data in its raw format as a relational formatted uh, files and uh, query them as if these are relational databases? That's the origin of data lake. Now, this can be a repository of files, right, using Azure Storage Account. You may be wondering what's the difference between this one and ODS. Um, the, but the, basically, ODS is a relational database. ODS still is stored in a relational database, whereas here we are talking about using files. File storage is cheaper, much cheaper than relational database. So that will reduce a lot of cost. When we talk about ODS, we said that ODS are generally uh, only containing recent files, uh, recent data. But uh, if you want to build your data warehouse on top of uh, data, uh, ODS, then you have to have all historical data in ODS now. But uh, if you uh, use the ODS to store historical data, uh, this will be pretty expensive, may not be as expensive as a, as a traditional data warehouse because you don't need to break up the uh, source system and reorganize data, but still storing historical data in lowest level in relational database still costs a lot. But if you can save all this as a relation formatted, relational formatted uh, files, then the cost can be re reduced dramatically. The term data lake gained popularity. It was invented by someone else, but uh, it will gain popularity after it was used by Apache Hadoop ecosystem. Apache, we, uh, when we discuss Apache ecosystem, we talk about Apache uh, Hadoop. Uh, store its data in Hadoop distributed file system, HDFS. Um, so this system itself is built on top of files and distributed files. A Hadoop data lake is one which have been built on a platform made up of Hadoop clusters, right? Hadoop is particularly popular in data lake architecture as it's open source as a part of Apache Software Foundation project. Azure uses Hadoop data lake technology to build its own data lake. So Hadoop is the, the uh, H, Hadoop has this HDFS, which is a file storage system, and the Hadoop clusters utilizing these files in the HDFS, thus forming the idea of the basis of a data lake. Uh, we discussed this before, but uh, there are three components in Hadoop. Um, Hadoop Comma, which contains library and the util, uh, utilities needed by other Hadoop modules. Then you have the HDFS, uh, distributed file system that stores data on commodity machines. Then we have Hadoop uh, MapReduce, basically is the compute level, uh, layer. 
talking about HDFS, it stores large files across multiple machines. They split data into blocks. They re replicate the data blocks across multiple hosts. And the data, data nodes will talk to each other to rebalance data, to move copies around, and to keep the replication of data high. The key here is HDFS can store file, can organize and store file and uh, make it available for further processing. So a data lake would be a series of uh, folders, a folder structure under HDFS to contain multiple files, each with a separate uh, slice of data. Here in this example, we split by sales, by sales force, by customer contact. There's definitely like customer contacts or customer activity. Then under each subject area, we also have a year, month, and within each month's folder, we have the daily sales information, right? Customer activity or customer contact. Um, so you are dividing them by subject, uh, by business subject area. You're dividing them further down by uh, year, month. This is the one of the most common uh, data lake organization hierarchy in, in in data lake. You will divide the data by business area, then divide them by month and uh, by year and month. <coughs> but the, the the end result is a hierarchy of a CSV file, of a data files stored in your system and that all these CSVs under the same subject area should have the same uh, schema, should have the same uh, definition of columns and values. So this custom contact uh, CSV file, uh, December 1st, December 2nd, December 3rd, they should have the same schema. Then custom activity files, December 1st, December 2nd, December 3rd, they should have their own schema. Um, this is the last it's easy to run a SQL query against all the custom contacts or all the custom activities and see if these are relational tables. So inside a data lake, right, that's a hierarchical file system where which handles security, performance enhancement, etc. Then you will utilize an API to call this uh, file system. And eventually, the data are stored in the blob storage, which is the blob storage in the account, uh, Azure storage account. You can also run SQL or Spark in addition to API against the data lake. It's still the same, a blob storage and hierarchical namespace and some, some kind of uh, uh, HDFS uh, file logic, which consists, uh, which uh, forms the whole Azure data lake storage. You can run SQL or Spark job against this data lake storage as the, uh, as a multiple relational data sets. Then Azure also adds some more technology to the original Hadoop system. So when you say it's a Hadoop HDFS, it's not exactly HDFS. It's a HDFS uh, <coughs> modified for Microsoft's purpose. The files stored in a data lake can have a many different uh, formats. Uh, the four most popular ones are CSV. I think we all know that. We um, anybody use Python for uh, for data science projects should know that. Then there's a Parquet, Avro, and Orc. All these are different formats, and uh, data lake implementations like Apache Hadoop and uh, Databricks, Delta Lake, or Azure. Uh, Azure Data Lake, they hide away these uh, details from us. So you should know there are such things as this uh, file format, but uh, for us, uh, it doesn't matter. And for this course, we are just going to use CSV. So as you can see, what is Data Lake? Data Lake is um, organized uh, files. Those files are, uh, uh, are generally uh, having a standard schema, uh, relational in, in nature, organized by certain folder structure, usually by subject area, followed by year and month, thus forming data lakes, which are file, uh, uh, data storage, relational data storage that is, uh, that is based on file. This is data lake, and the advantage of data lake is um, apparently it's cheaper, right? It's cheaper, <clears throat> but on the other hand, files, 
lack the consistency of relational database. Files lack the consistency and the integrity ensured by relational database. Relational database is known for its integrity. As we discussed, most uh, all a relational database has uh, D by default will enforce asset compliance. And also, data lake are slow. Because going through this uh, drive there is uh, without a certain metadata, without how to join, can be slower. And reading those files can be slower than reading the predefined relational database storage. So it's slower, it's less, uh, less uh, integrated. But uh, these two are actually the advantages of data warehouse. Data warehouse usually have a very high consistency inside itself. And uh, performance wise, data warehouse, either because of it uh, utilizes better hardware or because uh, its schema are better defined, can be faster than data lake. For this reason, they are uh, the, um, the they are not like in directly replacement to each other. Rather, they will be utilized. Data Lake and the Data Warehouse should be utilized for different scenarios. One very common scenario is for general uh, general queries, something that does not require exact accuracy, like AI machine learning scenarios. You can use Data Lake. Uh, but for um, accurate uh, performance evaluation, for um, auditing, for master data uh, management, you will utilize Data Warehouse. You can even put them together. Use the Data Lake for storage of uh, detailed original data and uh, utilizing Data Lake for analytics that does not require strong consistency. But then extra and load data from Data Lake into Data Warehouse. And uh, during this process, you will verify the data, validate the data, and um, consolidate the data so that a warehouse can, will store aggregated cleans the data. Sometimes this kind of data is called golden records. So when you combine these two together, a data lake and a data warehouse, you get what we call a data lake house. Data lake house, <coughs> as you can see, has uh, three layers. In the center is the data lake. Oh, at our I'm sorry. This is a, on a historical perspective. At our beginning, we use data lake, data warehouse, right? Structured data got ETL into data warehouse, uh, serving serving BI business intelligence and the reports. Data we have a data lake, structured, semi-structured, unstructured data from everywhere get into data lake going through the same ETL and get into data warehouse and uh, data warehouse and data lake feed together into uh, different the still the same BI business intelligence and the reports but then lake house uh, data warehouse and the data lake can combine together to feed into data science projects data lake itself can feed into machine learning process but at this point uh, these two are integrated, but uh, not still not one piece. They are the two different things. In fact, this is the how um, Data Lake House looks like inside Amazon. In Amazon, Data Lake and the Data Warehouse are two separate entities. The Amazon Redshift is Data Warehouse, whereas the data, uh, Amazon Lake Formation and S3 are Data Lake. So uh, you will uh, run on your own code to combine these two. If you need to run the same qu uh, one query uh, or one, uh, one uh, dashboard against Amazon data, data ecosystem to get data from either, you have to run two queries, one against each. But uh, in Azure, Azure actually combine this lake with the uh, warehouse under one roof which is uh, the lake storage, data lake storage. And this, in this case, is called data lake house. You will run one qu uh, query against um, the same uh, endpoint, data lake house, and feed them into BI reports, data science, and machine learning. This is uh, what uh, Azure currently is.